everyone, it's Joan Childs, and I'm here once again to share some of the excerpts from the chapters of my book, I Hate the Man I Love. A conscious relationship is your key to success. And I want to welcome you again to chapter seven, which is my favorite chapter, actually, A Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Why is it my favorite? I guess it's because I take the reader right inside my room, my office, with a couple, and it's as if you're a fly on the wall. I've said this before in my last session, but this chapter really puts you right in it to observe and to learn and to understand the dynamics that go on in, in couples therapy and the importance of being able to have somebody help facilitate the process. Because just like you go to a doctor when you have when you have a broken arm, you go to a, an orthopedic specialist, or if you have a, a female problem, you go to a gynecologist. When you have a, an internal problem that's affecting the, the quality of your life and with your partner, you really want to try to help get it fixed and do something to effectuate some kind of positive change. So this, A Bridge Over Troubled Waters, begins with a quote, and I try every chapter I start a quote with. Like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. Like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down, Paul Simon. So what I'm going to read a little bit from this, and it happens to be a couple that comes in. It's the second session that they have with me, and we go very deep into the childhood wounds, and it really exemplifies how, the, how in couples work, we can do inner child work. It's very cohesive and, it's, and it works very well. There's healing done on an individual basis in the context of the couple se session. So I want to read you this. Here's what we already know about human behavior. When we have a strong feeling about another person's behavior, it, is usually it usually applies to the person who feels threatened in some way because of his or her history, now, not because of the person who triggered their response. Anne's reaction to David, feeling unsafe to express her feelings, was triggered in the moment by his communication style, but that was not the sole reason. It's more like it's more than likely that her reaction primarily stems from an earlier childhood experience. If there had been more time, I would have asked Anne to remember a time when it didn't feel safe to verbalize her feelings. So what I'm doing is I'm having uh, the couple, one person is a visitor and one person is a host. And I'm having the couple learn about the history the land, uh, of, the, if they're, of their partner, learn about the landscape of their face, learn their language. It's a whole learning process. And through the effort of the facilitation of trying to go back to where does this feeling come from? When did I feel this way when I was younger? Just express the first thing that pops in your head. And it is amazing. It is amazing how quickly that screen memory pops up. And, it's, and the, the patient or the client realizes that this was an old trigger, this was an old feeling, that all I had to do was get the slightest feeling of the past, and boom, I'm right back there. So this chapter is very, very worthwhile. Well, they're all worthwhile, but this one really takes you into the process and you feel like you are in the room and you can also feel the empathy that you have for the person that's suffering and the empathy for the visitor who's there to lend a hand and try to alleviate and understand why his actions might have caused her feelings. I can promise you it's about early childhood wounds and how and this chapter shows how we repair it. So I look forward to having you join me on my next chapter, which is chapter eight, Take Charge of Your Fears and Reclaim Your Value. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me and I look forward to the next time we're together. Be safe and be well. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.